سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله 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 وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله والحمد لله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you? I don't know, I love you so much <laughs> This is what happens when friends do lives We just gush about each other Oh my gosh, I'm so honored and grateful that you are here today Let me introduce everyone to you This is Hafidha Layla Graham MashaAllah, she is a Qur'an coach. She's the founder of a Montessori curriculum that actually infuses decolonization and the concept of self with Qur'anic healing. Inshallah, today she's going to speak to us about so much. I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm, we'll, we'll just get started with what you're going to speak about. Yes, inshallah. You have, MashaAllah, memorized the Qur'an. You also... Yes. Alhamdulillah, you also founded a Montessori school with decolonization as part of the curriculum. Tell us about your journey to this to this space that you're in right now. Uh, well, I'll try to be concise, inshallah. So I memorized the Quran back in high school, alhamdulillah. Um, mm -hmm. I had many, many Quran teachers. Um, I pray for them all the time. May Allah bless them mm -hmm. for their work with me and for being patient with me. Um, but I did finish my, my hefil a little bit before graduating high school. And mm -hmm. then, um, basically, when I was around 23, I, um, I decided to train to become a Montessori teacher mm -hmm. um, for early childhood. So that's for ages two to six years old. Okay. Um, and uh, subhanAllah, as we were going through the course, I realized that the philosophy spoke to me as a Muslim. Like, I just felt like the philosophy was the sunnah. Mm. And uh, I, 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 I talked to my trainer about this, my mentor, and I told her um, how, like, is it okay for us to incorporate this in, into our religion, like to incorporate our religion into this? And she's like, absolutely. She said, you should not be separating your religion from, from what you're teaching the children in the classroom. And so, and she, is, she was a Christian. She wasn't, um, she wasn't a Muslim who taught us so subhanallah that's when like i started thinking um you know there is a holistic way to educate the children our muslim children and according to the sunnah but also according to what we know from science and child, and child development so subhanallah um last year i pre-launched uh prime learning resources i did not get to launch it <laughs> yet but inshallah i'm hoping this year in the uh sometime in the spring or early summer so what I hope to do is, like you said, provide a curriculum that decolonizes education where we can, we can, we can, be, we can talk honestly with our children mm -hmm. without, without whitewashing, without white centering, without um, bringing our history from a, like a colonized lens. Mm -hmm. So inshallah, like, I feel like that will empower our children and give them the confidence to navigate the world as a Muslim. Like growing up, we, we, I grew up a Muslim, alhamdulillah. I grew up a Muslim, but did I have the confidence that I see in my children today? No, mm -hmm. subhanAllah. Like I feel like they're unapologetically Muslim. Like my, my son, you know, when he was attending the public school, he would take his mushaf to school. And I was like, what are you doing? Why are you taking the mushaf to school? And he was like, because we have silent reading time and I want to read the Quran. And like for me, that was just, that's something I would have never dreamt of when mm -hmm. I was an eight or nine year old, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. So um, this is like my whole um, 
I guess you could say my whole mission is to foster the love of Quran in the hearts of children and also to really um, take back our our story, take mm -hmm. back our story from from those who have been telling it for us, mm -hmm. basically. And I'm talking about not only from a Muslim standpoint, but also indigenous people, black people, um, you know, people of other other cultures. Like, um, I remember, you know, one thing that I loved so much as a child was geography. I mm. was I was in love with geography. I used to memorize country names and capitals and everything. Like, uh, by the age of nine, I had already memorized all the states and everything. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it started early, <laughs> but uh, but but Subhanallah, like when I started my my own education, like by myself, because I I homeschooled for a while um, in high school, I realized that uh, you know what I see on maps is not what is the truth, really. Like <laughs> I remember the first time I realized that the map that we see, the world map that we see, is a distorted version of the world and the distorted version of the planet and it, it disturbed me because you know someone who loved geography so much why is this why is this a thing why mm -hmm. aren't we teaching the children um the reality of our of our world so um until now i have not <laughs> i have yet to buy a map for my children even though i love i love 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 having like maps and stuff on the wall but um i'm hoping to buy the um uh, there's a version of a map that is less distorted. I forgot the name of it, though. Maybe you know. Um, maybe you've heard of it. But uh, inshallah, this is this is what I hope to do, bi'idnillah. Um, and take, just, just, just decolonize our education. Decolonize it and make the integration of Islam into our children's ed ed education seamless. So mm -hmm. they don't see a difference between studying their religion and studying science and studying math and studying geography yes that's that's the real that's the real goal inshallah because our deen is relevant across the board in every facet of our life so that's that's the goal for prime <laughs> inshallah can you share a little bit more about math um there are a few questions where people might have never heard of this concept before why is it that maps that we typically see are distorted Okay, yes. So the maps that we typically use in school, that we use in school to learn the continents and the, and the countries, um, what I found was that the Northern Hemisphere is, um, is like disproportionately bigger than the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, this was due to, um, I believe, the Roman Catholic Church um, who commissioned uh, map makers to like create this this sort of um, this sort of distortion to make it look like the the Christian world was bigger than the non Christian world basically, mm -hmm. and so North America is looks huge and Europe and Russia and like these like predominantly Christian nations they mm -hmm. look so much bigger than like South America and Africa and like Southeast Asia, um, and so like that. I think is so damaging for our children and not only for like children of color, but even for white children, because it, it, it messes up their, their perception of who they are and what the world is. So um, that's, that's something that I, I realized also, even in Montessori curriculums, which I mean, like predom predominantly are produced by, you know, um, by, European companies or American companies, um, they they also follow this standard, unfortunately. So <laughs> I'm trying to basically introduce something different, inshallah, hopefully, um, if I if I manage to get the resources for that. But um, like, for instance, you know, Asia, there are so many, like, I can't even explain to you. There's, there's pub, there are puzzle maps for every continent in the Montessori cu curriculum. And for North America and Europe, every single country has a puzzle piece. But then mm. when it comes to Asia and Africa, mm. they got puzzle pieces like put together in one or, you know, just like the whole Israel-Palestine thing. Like, why is it, why is it called Israel? 
and then and then like just the the pieces itself some of them are much smaller than how they should be if they're like in asia or in oceania so um actually oceania they don't even include hawaii and the polynesian islands they only include like australia and like new zealand really mm -hmm. so that's something that we we don't realize until we really really look at things from a critical lens right. subhanallah so um i'm very i'm very very careful about what i introduce to my children i don't want them to have to unlearn so much like like I did and like we did like all of us did subhanallah so that's one thing that that's just one thing though <laughs> there's so much more subhanallah it impacts your psyche as you grow up just so yeah. it's the, the the impact is tangible absolutely absolutely why, why are you path what what brought you to critically considering of race and in the lens of Islam? Uh, I think I think that would have to start when I was in high school, subhanAllah. Um, I didn't have a traditional schooling. So um, like for one year of my high school, I was actually in Canada <laughs> in a madrasa, um, a, a boarding school for girls, subhanAllah. It was yeah. one of the best years of my life. One of the best years of my life, wallahi. Um, I know some of those sisters are watching now and I can tell you guys, like, it's been over 15 years, and we have created such a bond in that school, subhanAllah. So, the, so like, one year I was there, and um, the, the rest of the high school, I, I, uh, I homeschooled. Mm. So I had a lot of time on my hands to just, you know, read what I want to, watch what I want to, and, and just, like, look into things. I used to stay up all night just, just researching history and researching things on the internet, um, <laughs> about about our people about you know black people about muslim people um about our government also <laughs> because i mean let's face it you know we're we're taught a version of like civics and u.s government in school that is not really true so i think that's when i started to become you could say for lack of a better word radicalized <laughs> because i just I just realized like just so much of it is a lie. So much of it is a lie. And um, so from then on, basically, I never stopped. I never stopped reading and researching and looking for the truth. Um, and just just realizing that, especially for black people in this country, um, we've internalized a lot of our self-hatred. We've internalized it. And we don't realize how much hurt we're holding inside of ourselves until um we come across something different mm -hmm. um the 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 concept of loving yourself you know i, I understand we, we understood okay yes you have to love yourself you know um you know allah created you and you're a special human being and all of that but 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 for black people there needed to be a different kind of self-love because we were taught for so many years to despise what makes us us mm. and that's something um i think when i was around 20 i started to really like heal from i'm still healing from subhanallah i mean until now but one of the first things i think for most black women and in, in general is their hair mm. really their mm. hair and it, 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 does, it doesn't seem significant to most people, but, but black hair is such a sensitive topic and such a topic of strife in the black household. And, it's, and even in um, mixed households where one parent is black and the other is not, um, you know, it's like for years, we're just trying to shape ourselves into the standard of beauty that we that we are exposed to and so when i came to the point where you know what my hair isn't ugly it's it's just african it's just african it's it's not ugly it's just african Beautiful. you know and and that's that's like i just i remember that day when i decided no more no more chemical relaxers um no more flat irons no more any of that i'm just going to I'm just gonna be happy with the hair that Allah granted me as 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 a woman. Alhamdulillah, like that's my zina. 
you know um that's that's my beauty as 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 a woman and one thing that i wanted to point out was um a lot of a lot of girls and i see this still happening till today when they when they finally are awakened to their natural beauty as a black woman um sometimes they react in ways that are not are are not uh loved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like you know it's it's a trauma response really but i i don't want to excuse the disobedience to allah um so what happens is like some muslim girls i've seen it um black muslim girls they they decide finally they feel proud of what how they look and for for so many decades they've been they've been told that they they're ugly they take off their hijab right and i remember that moment where i finally felt beautiful as a as a black woman i was like i can't show it off to anybody but i don't want to begin this this journey of self love with disobedience to allah right mm-hmm. that's something that like that really like was really important for me to to uh to understand inside of myself like no matter how no matter where this healing journey goes if it takes me to a point where i'm starting to go against the word of allah and his rasul then i don't need it and it's not good for me it's not healing mm. so that's something that like yani i i hope my black brothers and sisters they um they understand this they because we like i said there is a lot of anti blackness especially in the muslim community mm-hmm. a lot of it and and it makes you feel a hatred in your heart astaghfirullah alazim it makes you feel a hatred in your heart and it makes you feel jaded towards the community but it's very important that we don't take our healing mm-hmm. as a justification to abandon the word of allah and the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's so so important Mm-hmm. um like so that's that's one thing like that i i keep in mind as i go through this journey and as i continue to teach my children about um our people and our history mm-hmm. whatever happens you always stay on the on the path of allah no matter what no matter how hurt how, no matter how painful it is mm-hmm. you stay on that path mm-hmm. and <laughs> that's just uh, i don't know um subhanallah um yeah i'm i'm <laughs> i'm 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 at a loss for words for a minute but uh thank thank you so much uh i think you know addressing these these very uh real very tangible pieces of your identity which are different from my identity are very helpful and healing to people who a identify with it with you or like me can come to a place of understanding and allyship inshallah you the muslim community and the trauma and the pain can you share with us um how you navigate this where people especially wearing the qab you mm. you wear the qab and someone might not know how to react to naqab as a naqab in and of itself mm-hmm. in the community mm-hmm. yeah but that's a that's a whole another struggle subhanallah i yeah. it also perhaps make people um choose a word they would not have chosen had they uh felt like they could perceive you in a different way oh absolutely absolutely so um you know just for the the benefit of the audience i am My mother is Yemenia and my father is African American. And mm-hmm. so I navigate the world through these two identities alhamdulillah. Um and it's not it's never like half and half. I feel like sometimes I feel more black and sometimes I feel more Yemeni. It's 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 interchangeable. Um and it really depends on the situation. Um but yani of course this is something that has been such a source of confusion <laughs> for me because sometimes um I'm around black people and they don't know I'm black mm-hmm. and they just you know they perceive me in in the way a black person would perceive a arab person in that you are a threat mm-hmm. because 
they have a history of being belittled and discriminated against by Arab people. It's very, it's very well known. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Arab community sometimes won't admit to it. It's very hard to acknowledge that sort of pain that you inflict on others, but it's there. It's there. Um, and then sometimes in, I'm in Arab circles and they don't know I'm black. Mm -hmm. And now I have another issue where, you know, I would hear th things being said about black people and I'm in that audience, I'm in that company and um, I have two options. I either react as if I didn't hear it or I say something and, and, and invite, you know, uh, open this can of worms now where I have to talk about how this is racist and you know, Allah doesn't, is, doesn't uh, condone this type of speech and all of this stuff. So it's like, it's like always having to choose, mm -hmm. you know, you know what am I going to do? What should I, should I engage or should I not engage? Um, it's, it's very confusing, subhanAllah. <laughs> but one thing, like I do try my, my best to, um, I do try my best to basically um, think think about my own like peace my own inner inner peace huh? because i can't i can't change everybody and i can't do the work all on my own everybody has to come to that conclusion on their own right so like you know black people they they have to realize black doesn't always look the same you know like i'm black but i don't look the same as everybody else and a lot of people, they have to get over their anti-racism. I mean, they have to get over their anti-blackness, I mean. Um, because, you know, even if a black person is not there, why are you saying these things? Why are you thinking these things? Right. Um, um, and, and especially as a Muslim, mm. you are at risk of corrupting your heart and corrupting your soul with that kind of arrogance, subhanAllah. So... Oh, did it? It froze for a second, but your voice. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I froze a little bit. Um, so like one thing that I just um, like I just wish my my Arab brothers and sisters would would heed and would listen to is that um, kibir or arrogance is a form of of uh, of shirk, according to you know, what we learned in, in the deen. Um, and shirk is the worst, the worst crime committed that a Muslim can commit. But also it's like, it's, it's dangerous in a way that I can't really describe with words because it's insidious mm. and it, it, it takes place in the heart and it's, it doesn't leave unless you do something about it. Mm. Um, unless you do, you act something about it. You can't just think to yourself, mm, black people are not bad. You can't do that. It's, it doesn't work like that. You have to like, really, you have to actively do something to eradicate this disease inside of your soul, you know? And uh, like, I'm, I, I talk, I talk about this sometimes, like as someone who is both, both Arab and black, I can, I can recognize the arrogance that, that, you know, my people have, my Arab people have, and I can also recognize the internalized anti-blackness that black people have, which is so hard to eradicate. You're, you're black and you're trying to unlearn anti-blackness. That's hard. So I can't imagine someone who isn't even black trying to eradicate anti-blackness from their heart. That is a, it's, it's a tremendous feat. It's a tremendous feat because it's so embedded and ingrained in our society. It's systemic um, uh, in a way that like, all I can call it is that it's such a great fitna. It's such a great fitna because um, it's, not, it's not only about a fitna to, for black people, it's a fitna for everybody because um, unless, unless something happens and unless we do something to eradicate it, you don't wanna die in a state of being arrogant or like in a state of having this, these sort of feelings towards another human being because you know we already know what the rasul وسلم, he said that if you have an atom's worth or a, a muscle's mustard seed's worth of arrogance in your heart uh, you, you know you won't enter paradise so 
like for me when I talk about these things I talk about it from a place of um deep concern mm -hmm. for my for for the ummah mm -hmm. deep deep concern because Rasulullah he was Arab and the Quran was revealed in the Arabic language right. um, and at the time the people of the Arabian Peninsula they were um, they were basically drowning in, in tribalism and whatever you want to call it nationalism they didn't have nations but they had they had very deep seated tribalism which caused them to uh, to kill each other and to, you know, do horrible things to each other. And for me, I just feel like, okay, it's been over a thousand years later. <laughs> like, where are we now? Like, right. can we, can we evolve? Can we get past this now? Um, subhanAllah, like it was before it was, you know, Arab against Arab. And now it's like everyone against everybody, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody against everybody. Um, you know, subhanAllah, now you, you have a, um, a whole full-fledged slave trade in Libya. Oh. And that, that's something that, like, you know, not a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are aware of. But it's, like, it's just so um, overwhelming to think of. Because when we think of slavery, we automatically think of, you know, chattel slavery from the transatlantic uh, slave trade. And, like, that was probably, like, the most horrific form of, of oppression that has taken place in modern history so like for me i i automatically shut it out mm. <laughs> when i see that kind of news i i can't you can't process it. i can't handle it right. because to to think of that happening right now still mm. you know still like and in a muslim nation right like how how mm. how is this happening yeah, I mean, subhanAllah. Um, but one of the things that has always been a source of comfort for me through all of all the injustices that happen in the world is going back to the, the Book of Allah and also reflecting on his names and attributes, Asma Allah al Husna. Mm -hmm. Because they are such a comfort. Yeah. You know, we, we, we take comfort in the name Ar Rahman, the most merciful, Ar Rahim, the the bestower of mercy. We we take comfort in names like Al Latif, the gentle, Al Wadud, the most loving, Al Al, al Nur, the light. But I also take comfort in names like uh, like Dunjiqam, mm -hmm. Aziz and Dunjiqam, the Avenger, and Al Hakam, the ultimate judge, Al Adl, the most just. A shaheed, the ever witnessing, he sees everything and he he knows everything and he hears everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that is happening in this universe, let alone on planet Earth, that that Allah is unaware of. Mm -hmm. And so, like watching all of this injustice, it mm -hmm. can harden the heart, it can desensitize the heart. Um, but it's so important to hold on to the Book of Allah and to continue to understand who Allah is really like that's that's the that's the essence of faith because I feel like if I came upon this awakening as as you say like this um, re-education before having established a love and understanding of Allah that would have been really bad for me mm -hmm. because kind of like I said some people they react in a way that is very displeasing to Allah. They react with kufr. Like they, I, I, I've read about so many black people who have apostated mm -hmm. because they, they feel like, you know, um, this is the religion of the Arab, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. this, is the, this, is, this is the religion of the slavers, they say. Yeah. And, uh, I, I, and, and subhanAllah, this is like our, our Rasul وسلم, was sent as Rahmat al-Alameen. He wasn't sent to just the Arab. And even though he was Arabi, he didn't behave as someone who was above it all or 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 special because he was Arabi. Mm -hmm. He was special because he was the best human being, period. Right. Period. Right. SubhanAllah. So like um 
that's like that's something that I I really hope that my community both communities <laughs> both communities can heal from because it's just like our ummah has so much work to do and we are stuck uh, we're we're regressing mm. and we're not developing the way that we're supposed to be in the in the speed that we're supposed to be because we're stuck with this stuff right. i mean racism right. really yeah like it is so pathetic to me like can we get back to like developing the cure for cancer or something like can we do something about hunger and 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 yeah i mean racism <laughs> really that's mm. that's the thing that we're stuck on so that's the thing that like really it frustrates me because like get over it get over it human beings we have work to do <laughs> and and like we know that a, 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 the the last hour is very close mm -hmm. everybody feels it mm -hmm. everybody feels it you you watch the news you are aware of current events you feel that the end times are here mm -hmm. you feel it but and and, and you know about the, the fitna of a Dajjal, which is said to be the greatest fitna that human beings will ever face in the history of any time. Uh, but we can't get over the fitna of racism. Right. Really. Right. Like, right. Uh, you know, it just, it just astounds me. It right. just astounds me. And, and one of the things that like, I have to bring this up because it's been in my mind for a long time. Um, one of the things that I, I remember thinking in the wake of George Floyd and everything that happened after that and the response from the Muslim community in like trying to educate mm -hmm. um, the Muslim community about the great black people in our, in our history. Yeah. Right. Like the, the, the great muhaddithin and scholars and there's great people, no doubt, no doubt. But I felt like that was so misguided mm. in because mm. What was happening was we were we were trying to place black people on a pedestal, like, look, black people could be good too, Thanks. you know, and <laughs> and that was something that like just killed me. Mm -hmm. It killed me because why why do we have to? Um, uh, I, I I lost the word. Basically, how why do we have to make black people seem like angels and like heroes in order for us to 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 give them just basic respect and like decency. Right. Uh, right. right. <laughs> as yeah, yeah, like, you know, just the, the whole, the whole entire thing. Um, some people were, were just questioning, like, why are we upset over George Floyd? You know, like, yeah, well, he was like, you know, they were, they were just saying like, what, what did he do to earn our, um, our outrage and stuff? It was because he was a human being. Yes. He was a human being. Yeah. Period. And he, uh, like Allah says in the Quran so many times, like the the, sac the sanctity of the human nafs, right. like the 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 soul of a human being, and to take a soul without justification is so wrong. So, like for me to have to hear people tokenize Bilal radiallahu anhu, right. and our great scholars you know and and great people in our history like mansa musa and and all of these people um and najashi all of these amazing uh pillars in our history it was like y'all are missing the point right right there's a big concept of tokenization in our community where we point to like five figures that we know and mm. then yep look there's no racism in islam and then, yeah. Rahimahullah. But how much of that is part of our, how much of that goes beyond just tokenizing? And it, it's so belittling. So it is. It is belittling. It is belittling because, like, you know, um, anybody, anybody sees, like, um, uh, a Black person doing, like, the most basic thing. And it's like, wow, you know, that's amazing like they they survived slavery and they they managed to to become great it's like we didn't manage to become great we were always great we were always great that greatness was was stolen from us yes it was stolen from us yes and like subhanallah yeah. and one of the things that really like 
um, I don't know if other Muslims feel this way, but maybe maybe Black Muslims will relate to, is that um, there's a deep sorrow mm. and emptiness in not knowing our lineage, mm. you know? And that's something like, you know, when we're, so like when we're, when we're made fun of or like, you know, belittled because of our culture or um, the way that we speak or the way that we, we interact with each other, it's like, what do you want from us? Mm-hmm. We were stolen. Our, our forefathers were stolen. Our foremothers were stolen. We cultivated this culture that we have here in the Americas. And um, as long as we're not doing anything haram, it should be, it should be celebrated. It should be encouraged because we don't have the lineage. Mm-hmm. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was very um, clear in how we interact with the orphans and those that we adopt. Allah says, don't, don't let them adopt your, your, your last names or your surnames. Call them according to their fathers. That is what is, uh, you know, the best, you know, with Allah. But we don't even know our, um, our tribal names. We don't even know our, our father's names. Mm-hmm. You know, our father's names are the names of, of our white kidnappers. And so, like, you know, these are the things that I feel like when the rest of the community, they are critical, they're critical of the Black Muslim community and how things have gone. Like, I'm talking about since, since the civil, civil rights movement until now, I, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not looking at it from a very nuanced perspective, right? right? It's mm-hmm. it's so much more complex than than they're giving us credit for. Right. Subhanallah. And um yeah, I just uh I just rattled on for thirty seven minutes, subhanAllah. But yeah. <laughs> rattled on for thirty seven minutes. You honoring <laughs> with being so you're 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 taking the time, you're being vulnerable and you're educating when it's not even your place to educate. So thank you so much. Like I said, like I said before, I just it come I come from a place of deep concern, very deep concern for our people and for our ummah, um, and, and especially because I I, I do want to see better for our next generation, inshallah. And I do have hope. I do have hope. I'm not like 100 percent like pessimistic, even though sometimes I do come across that way <laughs> in oh. my uh, social media and stuff. I think but I do. <laughs> Everyone here knows, but Afiha <laughs> Layla is actually a bit of a TikTok star. I am not a star. <laughs> <laughs> she talks about these issues, uh, and I think it's really important because, like, when you say I rant a little bit or I come off pessimistic, like, no, you are actually addressing issues the way that people feel them, and and the way that people are not acknowledging them at times. So I think that's a very huge for for. For the people in our community who have the heart, but also for people who are looking for how to, who are looking for the language on how to address these issues, you're giving people language. I think that's very. Oh, alhamdulillah. Important. Alhamdulillah. And, and I want to acknowledge that I'm talking from a place of extreme privilege because I am in the black community considered a light skinned black person. I don't, I don't experience the extreme oppression of being a dark-skinned woman because Mm -hmm. that is a type of uh, hatred that Mm -hmm. is just, I've never seen anything like it before. And I haven't experienced it. I haven't experienced it, but it's the most um, insidious and most vile, the most vile type of hatred I have ever seen in my life for just skin color. Like Mm -hmm. I said, it's so pathetic, Hawaii. But... Mm -hmm. um, like mm-hmm. I said, I'm, 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 I, for all of my black brothers and sisters who are, who are watching, like I do come from a place of privilege being that I am considered light skin mm-hmm. and that <clears throat> I am Arabi. Mm-hmm. I am Arabia mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day. So <laughs> um, while I, I do try to um, call out my people though, because I know things mm-hmm. I feel I know things about the community that non-Arab Black people don't, mm-hmm. and and they 
uh, I try my best to 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 come to their um, to come not not to like. I don't like to I don't like to make it sound like I have some sort of like savior complex or anything. But if I hear anything wrong being said about my black brothers and sisters, I don't hesitate to embarrass a person. Basically, <laughs> that's the way that I feel is the only it's, it's the only way effective. Um, I know, you know, a lot of people talk about calling in and, and private, privately saying things, but um, when some, someone is saying something that has been uh, uh, systematically, like, you know, ingrained in our society, mm -hmm. and that you know now better, like, you, you now know better. So if you don't change, then you deserve to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. If you don't change, you deserve to be humiliated. That's, that's the way I feel. That's the way I feel mm -hmm. because we live in the, in the era of the internet and social media. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't know things, it's because you're not looking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're not looking. Mm -hmm. So that's, <laughs> I know it's very like confrontational and, and um, you know, some people might think like, you know, I'm, I'm looking for conflict. I'm actually a very non-confrontational person. I'm, a, I'm an introvert. I hate fighting. Um, I like the peace. I don't like to start things with people, but um, there are certain types of injustices that I just can't stomach. Yeah. yeah. I can't stomach it. Sometimes I really can't. Public accountability at times is the only way in which people will think twice because even if they're not going to themselves, at least mm -hmm. before being put in a position, they might be embarrassed of that again. Right, right, right. Exactly. That, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Um, and especially if they're a person of influence, right? right? You, you don't right. have an excuse. You have no excuse. You just don't. Right. None. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I do talk about, you know, issues pertaining to the black struggle a lot, but, uh, if you follow this account, I do like to highlight the, um, the struggles of indigenous people as well, because I feel like it's so, so critical as Muslim people who believe in justice mm. and who continue to fight for indigenous rights overseas, right. to fight for ind indigenous rights here in the land that we are currently living in, residing in. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we have um, you know, a system that is occupying land right now right. Right. that we live in and that we consume from. So like, you know, I do take the time, I try to um, learn as much as I can. I don't know everything about about this struggle, um, even though my family have they've told us that we have indigenous blood, but we don't know <laughs> things because you know our family tree is just it's a mess. It's a mess. On the black side, we don't know things. Subhanallah. But they um, but even if I was not aware of any indigenous lineage. I still think as Muslims, it's, it's yeah. a must. Yes. As, a, as a Muslim. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a must because um, these people have been disenfranchised and their land has been stolen. And uh, they are the only ones in this country who actually care about the environment. Mm. They are the only ones. And so as a Muslim, I mean, we're, we're told not to leave Edda, like not to leave anything that is harmful in, in the, in the tariq, in the way. Uh, uh, and then you have, you know, you see how it is now pollution and everything. Right. Um, these are the only people fighting for our right to clean water and for, um, you know, holding, holding big corporations accountable. Um, and, and, and I just feel like we Muslims, we should be on that front. We mm -hmm. should be on that front. Right. Why are they doing it by themselves? You know, and, and why aren't we amplifying their voices? Um, subhanallah. So <clears throat> that's something that I also um, I'm very like um, insistent <laughs> about because it's important. Yeah. It's really critical. You've um, mentioned before that you you've you've mentioned your father seeing Malcolm X when he was a child on the street, Rahimahullah, and you about how as Muslims we have a response to to the environment to the world to other communities um, and how in our own community we take someone like Malcolm X Rahimahullah and we talk about him as a great figure 
um, but we're not practicing the, the, the ideals is not the right word, we're not practicing Islam that he, that we quote we're talking about. <laughs> right, right, but, right. What would you recommend for someone who is approaching the Quran? Can you recite some verses that talk about what our role is as a community in terms of how we should be all of these different types of very, very critical uh, issues that we should be participating in? Absolutely, inshallah. Um, it's like the one thing that I, I think of when I think of um, our beloved Black American Prince, Malcolm X, I think of how he was of ulul al-bab. Mm. He was of someone who used his critical thought. He used the facilities that Allah blessed him with uh, and blessed all of us with. He was not like you know, more intelligent than the rest of us, but he used it. Mm -hmm. He used it to think beyond what he was told, mm -hmm. you know? Um, you know, like the most amazing story was when he went to Mecca and he, he realized that Islam was the solution to everything, mm -hmm. that everything, not only racism, but, but literally everything. Mm -hmm. Our, our, uh, our religion provides us with, with a book that has the answers mm -hmm. for everything. And we take that for granted, you know, um, that's what, it, like, that ayah, like, in Surah Sad, whenever I read it, I do think about that. Like, it says, A'udhu Billahi Min Shulun Arjim. Kitabun anzadnahu ilayka mubarakun liyaddabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadhakkara ulul albab. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he revealed to us a book that is blessed Mm -hmm. And so that we may reflect on it and on its ayat. And so that ulul albab, those with uh, good thinking and those with brains mm -hmm. can, can reflect on it. And so, um, like, I just feel like as, as people who have been born to Islam, I've been, I was born to Islam and I feel like I can't really like speak to the, to the revert story, but being the daughter of a revert, I think I can kind of like picture it a little bit. Um, just how much thought has to go into to, to, to really admitting to yourself that Islam is the right way and that Allah is the true God. It really needs a lot of humility and, uh, and critical thought mm -hmm. because Islam is a logical religion. It's mm -hmm. not something that we, um, you know, we're just... We're, we're, we're just parrots like we just you know repeat what we are what we hear it's so logical and it makes sense mm -hmm. and so subhanallah that's something that my father he said when he was looking for a religion he grew up christian he mm -hmm. was looking for a religion though because that wasn't answering something inside of him uh he he, he studied many religions judaism buddhism uh, all of these uh religions and then you know subhanallah my uncle was the one who gifted him a Quran when he visited Morocco. Mm. And then he decided to take his own trip to Africa. And there he embraced Islam amongst the people who looked like him, subhanAllah. And so that's why like another thing that we mentioned is sometimes, you know, feeling that ukhuwa, that, um, that brotherhood with, with people who understand you culturally, mm. it, does, it does bolster one's iman some at times you know i'm not saying all the time but at times it does help you know when especially when the person has felt isolated for a long time you know so subhanallah that's something um it gives me hope yeah. because <laughs> hope is not lost on people if they only use their brains subhanallah um but i told you that i have some ayats from surah fusilat um going back to the message that i said in the beginning of this live where <sighs> I think it's important for us to hold on very tightly to the rope of Allah, um, no matter our trauma and no matter our hurt. Um, we we use that hurt to we we use that hurt to channel our iman and our 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 bond to Allah. Just like Yaqub alayhi salam when he said, uh, "Inna ma 
I'm going to charge you. Help me out, Mariam. <laughs> the, the ayah starts Yusuf, um, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Like, I, I, I complain and I tell all of my sorrows to Allah, you know? So that's one thing that I hope that, like, my people, they understand. Because mm-hmm. no matter how hard it gets and how, like, angry and sorrowful you feel about the treatment that you've, that you've been subject to from, from your own people, from the Muslims, you, you have to hold on to, to Allah. You have to hold on to the hope of Allah. Mm-hmm. And to the promise of Allah for justice. Mm-hmm. That's so important. Yeah. So um, I'll just recite some ayahs from Surah Fussilat, inshallah. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Inna alladheena qalu rabbuna allahu thumma staqamu إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم ومن أحسن قولا من من دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع العليم those ayat were so powerful and especially after this conversation just talking about the angels being to give you this comfort and this relief and the glad tidings subhanallah subhanallah is just uh uh how do you translate that uh it's, it's like um push I struggle to translate it too yeah. because it doesn't. The English does not do it justice. In fact, um, and, um, well, give uh, put, push forward with what is good and, with what and, is and, and, better. And try that which is good, right? Would that be um, a good translation? Or your your voice cut out? Can you say it again? Oh, you! I cut up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like, to strive forth with that which is good. Thank you. Subhanallah. Yeah, subhanallah. Subhanallah. Thank you so much for sharing with, that with, with that us. Which is better, yes. Yes, mashallah. Uh, it was so beautiful you your recitation and more, more importantly for you to share this conversation with and tell us about how the Quran is a source of healing that regardless Absolutely. of what type of abuse or trauma or that we've experienced even if it's on the 
the, the tongues of the people who speak the Quran. But that's not the message of the Quran itself, and we can find healing in it. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's my biggest source of comfort every day, mm -hmm. every single day. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I would be or who I would be without the Quran. Yeah. Like, yes. I can't imagine a life without it. And that's why, like, I, I become so, um, so distraught because I feel like if, if, if black people found Islam, like everything, like nothing else would matter. Nothing else will matter. I, I, I think they I, have our our people have suffered so much yeah. and, and and Islam has the comfort and the wisdom to grant them their peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's something that I feel really like I I, I hope that <laughs> more more and more come to Islam inshallah in and, and and I you know, from someone who's not a black Muslim that that when someone who is black finds that peace and healing in Islam that myself, people who are not black can actually reflect those messages and create mm. communities. And absolutely. Absolutely. It's just so incredibly infuriating and, and, and painful to witness what it's like to hear, to hear about what it's like to be a black Muslim woman or man in our community. And absolutely, you having this conversation with me and sharing with us. Jazakallah khair, Maryam, for you know offering me this platform and Thank for you. sharing it with with Thank me. You, I'm so grateful, and humbled that you would speak about such a, such a personal issue on a public space, and you do it no. so powerfully in your TikTok video. <laughs> uh, actually, before we give your information, how people can connect with you, can you end with a dua? Yes, inshallah. I, I have a dua for everyone in English so that everyone can comprehend what I'm saying. Oh, so important. I really appreciate that you were intentional about English because I've been so many duas and alhamdulillah now I speak Arabic, but before I didn't. And people would be like resetting dua for like 10 minutes and I didn't get a single thing. But I know, I know. <laughs> yes, thank you. Go ahead. You're welcome. Oh Allah. We praise you and we rely on you and we ask you for guidance. We ask your forgiveness and we repent to you and we attribute all that is good to you. We thank you and we never disbelieve in you and we reject and extract anyone who abandons you. O oh Allah, send your salutations and peace upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad mm -hmm. as you have saluted and granted peace to Abraham and the family of Abraham. Indeed, you are the most praiseworthy and most honorable. O oh Allah, send your blessings upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad as you have blessed Abraham and the family of Abraham. Indeed, you are the most praiseworthy, the most honorable. O oh Allah, penetrate our hearts with the light of Al-Quran, mm. with the blessings of Al-Quran, mm. with the wisdom of Al-Quran, mm. and with the guiding compass of Al-Quran. Mm. O oh Allah, grant us the mercy through Al-Quran. Mm. Establish, establish it in our hearts as our leader our light and our refuge. Mm -hmm. O oh Allah, indeed we are your slaves, daughters of your male and female slaves. Our existence is in your hand. Your judgment upon us is assured and your decree upon us is just. We ask you with every name that you have named yourself with or revealed in your book or taught to any of your creation or kept with yourself in the knowledge of the unseen that is with you that you make the Qur'an the spring of our hearts, mm. the light of our chests, mm. the banisher of our sorrows, mm. and the reliever of our distress. Mm. O oh Allah, cause the Qur'an to be a pleading witness for us and not a case against us on the day of judgment. Mm. O oh Allah, grant us shifa from all that ails us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Mm. O oh Allah, protect and preserve the hearts of the believers from doubt and disbelief. Mm. Grant us steadfastness and conviction and allow us not to deter from your straight path. O oh Allah, on this blessed day of Friday, we ask you to rid us of the poisonous diseases of racism, nationalism, and tribalism. Mm -hmm. We ask you, Almighty Lord, to strip us of any and all arrogance and superiority we may hold in our hearts towards our fellow human beings. Mm -hmm. We ask you, our Lord, to grant relief and victory to the oppressed, mm -hmm. those whom we are aware of and those we are unaware of. We ask you, Lord of the universe, to pour, to pour upon your oppressed slaves your infinite and boundless mercy mm. and heal them from the wounds of hatred, corruption, and mistreatment. Mm -hmm. 
We ask you, all Lord, to bless our lovely go our, our lovely host, Ustela Maryam, Amen. and to grant her the piety, serenity, devoutness, and humility of her namesake. Yeah. May our sister in Islam be elevated and used to spread the love of your noble book to the very corners of this planet. Mm -hmm. O Allah, bless her, preserve her, and grant her steadfastness in, your, in her endeavors to serve you, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O Allah, like grant us goodness in this life and goodness in the hereafter and spare us from the punishment of the fire. Mm -hmm. Ameen. Uh, I included in that and you and every single one of us and our loved ones. That was so kind of you to include my name in there. I have to. I love you so much for the sake of Allah, Maryam. Allah is my witness. love you and I love Allah's my witness. For the sake of Allah, I feel so grateful and so blessed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me with knowing you and with being your friend. It is like such a... <laughs> Your friend, I told I told everyone I could die happy now. I'm Mariam's <laughs> friend, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> the other way around, girl. Subhanallah. Um, Subhanallah. So, oh no, thank you. Can you share with us all the different ways that people can connect with you as we end? Right now? Okay, so the best way to connect with me is through this account, Prime Learning Resources. And Al-Kitab Al-Munir um, is my Qur'an account where I, I share reflections on teaching and learning Al-Qur'an. I'm going to try um, to... Oh, I will, yeah, on your IGTV, I'll tag it, inshallah. Okay. Um, and then on TikTok, I go by Lulu Gbot, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I'll tag that too if you want, I guess. <laughs> and of course, you can email me as well. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put all those down, inshallah. Inshallah, I do that. Yeah. So in short, she uploaded onto IG. Put all of her um, handles on there so you can follow her. Inshallah. 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 Thank you so much, Layla, Ustada Layla, for the conversation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Ustada. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. I love yep. you for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you and I love you for the sake of Allah. And may Allah allow us to be reflection of love in our communities. I mean, I mean, be allies to one another and all the things that we face. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm conversation in the comments yes thank you thank you everyone for joining <laughs> thank you so much it's, a, it's such a gift to have all of you and such a gift to have your voice that alayla subhanahu <laughs>